Welcome everybody to TechCraft. This is Rob. Today I'm going to be talking about this cool bit of kit, the Logitech MX Anywhere 2S mouse. I picked the mouse up around about six months ago to work with my MacBook Pro and then more recently I've been using it with the iPad Pro and I found that that combination has been super productive for me. So I want to dive into why I think this is such a good mouse, why I think this is probably the best mouse you can get for traveling with. If you stick around to the end, I'm going to do a full deep dive on how to customize this with your computer and how to get the most out of it when paired with the iPad Pro. Let's go. Okay, let's start with what matters the most for a travel mouse, and that is form factor. If we compare this, the MX Anywhere 2S mouse, to my desktop mouse, which is a Logitech 720, you can see that it's quite a bit smaller than the desktop mouse. Likewise, if we hold them both, you can see that the MX Anywhere is much smaller than my hand, whereas the M720 basically fills the whole hand. For my taste, the MX Anywhere is about as small as it could be. Any smaller, and I think it would be unusable for real work. If you have really large hands, you may even need to stick with something like the 720, a real desktop mouse, just because you might find it too uncomfortable to use the MX Anywhere for a long period of time. Now, that said, I have used the MX Anywhere for many months now, and I have been using it for three or four hours at a time, and it's not caused me any problems, but I don't have the biggest hands. So um, your mileage may vary, but I honestly think this is the best travel mouse form factor that I have seen. Where I think the MX Anywhere truly excels as a travel mouse is in the feature set. There are desktop mice that would actually struggle to match the feature set of this mouse, even with their larger form factor. So let's dive in and see what you actually get. So obviously you get the standard left and right mouse buttons. On the side here, you have a backwards and a forwards button. And when you're browsing the net, you can use the backwards and the forwards to can kind of control your navigation through your history, which is obviously a very nice feature. Going back to the top here, you have the scroll wheel. This is a really cool scroll wheel, and it actually has two different scroll mo modes. In hyper scroll mode like this, where I'm just freely scrolling, I don't know if you can even see it on the camera, it's just like scrolls with almost no inertia. The document that you're scrolling through will just can kind of continue to scroll. So if you're browsing long documents or you're kind of like trying to skim through a PDF, this is ideal. If you need more precise scrolling, then you can press down like that on the scroll button and you get this kind of traditional ratcheted style scroll where progression through the thing you're scrolling through is much um, much less pronounced and is far more accurate. What I think is especially cool about this scroll wheel is that in addition to the kind of standard scroll forwards and backwards, it has a side to side press. You can press side to side like that. And then depending on the application you're in, this will do different things. So in the browser, for example, it's kind of a horizontal scrolling motion, which is obviously very useful if you've got kind of weird and wonderful documents. Or if you're zoomed in on a PDF in Chrome or in Safari, then this enables you to kind of move around in that view, which is really, really nice. Obviously, before you can take advantage of any of these features, you have to connect the mouse to your device. So let's talk a little bit about connectivity. The MX Anywhere supports both Bluetooth and Logitech's unified receiver, which is this kind of little dongle here that comes in the box. Honestly, these days, I really don't see a reason to be using the unified receiver. Maybe if you've got a single desktop computer, you have a Logitech keyboard and Logitech mouse, then the unified receiver, which will, will power both devices, is good. But if you're using a, a 
device traveling, especially if you're using this mouse with, say, a laptop and an iPad and maybe even a desktop as well, then Bluetooth is clearly the way to go. And I, I really believe this is where the MX Anywhere truly excels. Not only is the Bluetooth performance on this mouse outstanding, with the help of this little selector here, you can actually pair this device, uh, This sorry, you can pair this mouse with three devices at once. For me, this has been an absolute killer feature. I have this paired with my MacBook Pro and with my iPad Pro and even with my desktop actually for when I'm doing testing. Um, if I'm traveling with just one device, say I'm traveling with just my iPad, then I have the mouse set to whichever of these numbers is my iPad and it just stays like that and it's fine. If I then switch and travel with my, with my MacBook Pro, I can just toggle selector and away I go. But when I'm traveling with both devices, which I often do because sometimes I'll I'll travel with my iPad for basic document creation, maybe for browsing the net and stuff, but I'll take my MacBook for video editing and coding work. I can easily toggle between which device the mouse is controlling just by pressing this button. This is superb. Usually if you're doing that, you have to repair the device. It's like, okay, well now I want my mouse to be paired with my MacBook, go through the whole Bluetooth pairing process. None of that here. In fact, I think it's worth demonstrating this. So let me grab my MacBook, let me grab my iPad and we can see how it works. So here we are. I've got my MacBook Pro here. I've got my iPad Pro here. And I'm going to turn the mouse on because it's turned off at the moment. It will choose to buy into one of the devices. I can't quite remember which one I left it bound to last time. And then we'll see how fast it finds the device. And then we'll toggle between them to see how fast it switches. So I'm just going to turn it over. Uh, I'm going to turn the power on here like that. Um, you saw it briefly flash at the bottom here, and then pff, when it's a solid white light, that means it's found the device, and then when the light goes off, it means, yeah, everything's fine. So it bound to device two, which for me is my iPad Pro. So if I toggle through this now to device one, in fact, it doesn't even uh, blink. Usually the blink is to say it's hunting, but it found the MacBook so quickly uh, that there is literally there's no delay and this is the kind of standout feature of how this works for me when I'm traveling I often grab like 15 to 20 minutes to do some work pull the mouse out if I had to spend 30 45 seconds messing about with the Bluetooth then I probably would just abandon the mouse completely but it really does perform so well so let's talk power now because obviously for a travel mouse power is super important Logitech advertises a 70-day battery life for this mouse. I can't attest to that, but I can say that in six months of using the mouse, I've only charged it up once. So I can certainly believe that 70 days is the battery life for this mouse. It charges through a micro USB port on the front here. Um, I will say this is probably my only disappointment with the mouse is that it's not USB-C. I really would like to get to the point where all my devices are USB-C, but it's a small price to pay for such a, a cool mouse, so it's not really a big issue. One of the cool things about this mouse is that every button on it is completely customizable. If you install the Logitech Options software, you can control exactly what each of these buttons does, not just globally across the operating system, but on a per application basis. Let's dive over to the computer now to see exactly how that works and what we can do with these cool buttons in our different applications. Let's go. So here I am with Logitech options open on my computer. I'm running this on the Mac right now, but the Windows version is essentially the same. So you should be able to do pretty much uh, what I'm going to do in this little demo. Right away, you can see there are three tabs across the top here. There's the mouse tab, which allows you to control all the buttons. There is the point and scroll tab, which allows you to control things like pointer speed and scroll direction and so forth. And then there is the flow tab, which allows you to control Logitech's cool little flow software, which is basically seamless uh, cross computer, copy and paste, mouse, cursor, keyboard, everything. I'm not going to show you how Flow works today. That's a video in its own right. Uh, if you are interested, please chuck a comment below and I can put together a video for how that works across Mac and across Windows. But let's dive back to the mouse tab because I think this is the most interesting tab. Um, and here you can see 
that the buttons are highlighted with these cool little um, uh, circles and you can click on each of these circles to configure the button function. Now the first thing to say is you can't actually change what the left and right buttons do, but you can swap which is left and which is right. Um, so if you're left-handed and you want the uh, this button here to be the main click, then you can set that as, as, as you desire. Now if you click here, for example, on the center button, you'll see that is classed as the gesture button. And you can choose which gesture it is um, that you want that button to correspond to. So this typically corresponds to some kind of like platform specific touch gesture. So I have it set to the Windows navigation gesture on Mac. And if I press the center button, you can see that basically it's just bringing up all of my desktop windows here for me to browse through. Um, what I really like to do with this button though is kind of give it an application specific feature. So if I come up here to all applications, I can enable application specific settings, choose an application. I'm going to choose Google Chrome. And what I really want is for this center button to open up a new browser tab. Now, if you're doing this on Windows, you will see in this menu here, a new browser tab option, but there is no option for that on the Mac, which is very frustrating, but you can get around it quite easily. So if you click keystroke assignment here, and then we press in this uh, box here, and we press command and T, which is the shortcut in Mac and in Chrome to open a new tab, then when we now go into Chrome, and I now press the center button on the mouse, you'll see a new tab opens up. If I close, Chrome and I go back to the finder window and press the center button, I still get the default behavior, which is the Windows navigation option. That's pretty much all there is for configuring the buttons inside Logitech options. Let's now take a look at how we can configure this mouse on the iPad Pro. Okay, I'm here with my iPad Pro now. For mouse support, you're going to need at least iOS 13. I'm running the public beta, but general release is only a few weeks away, so you might just want to hang on for that. My experience hasn't been without its problems, so I wouldn't recommend it to anybody to install the beta. The first thing we need to do is pair the mouse with the iPad over Bluetooth. So I've unpaired my mouse for this demo. So I'll just switch into settings and then we'll go into Bluetooth. You can see I don't have the mouse paired in this list. It's not showing in the other devices just yet. I'm going to turn the mouse on. And then immediately it's going to pop up. I want to make sure that I'm using the right device slot. So I'm oscillating and I'm going to put the mouse into pairing mode by holding the selector button down and the light starts to flash very quickly. Now, one of the issues is you'll start, you'll see the mouse pop up multiple times um, as you oscillate through the selector buttons, but it's always the bottom one that you want to choose and then just press pair, which is cool. So now the mouse is paired with the iPad over Bluetooth, but nothing happens yet. Before you can actually use the mouse, you need to enable mouse support in iOS. So to enable mouse support in iOS, what we're going to do is still in the settings here, we're going to scroll down until we see accessibility. And then we're going to scroll down within here until we see touch under physical and motor. We're going to press that. We're going to go into assistive touch and then press assistive touch again to actually enable mouse support. And immediately you'll see that the pointer has popped up here on the screen and I'm moving my mouse around now so you can see it. Now I can start to use the left mouse button here to uh, add like a tap on the screen, basically, as you would totally expect. And if I press the right mouse button, I get this cool little context menu that allows me to do all kinds of cool things. So I can bring up the control center, for example, or if I go in again, I can actually dive deeper into these menus and get all the way down to things like create the shake gesture if I want, take a screenshot, restart the device. These menus are quite deep, so it is worth exploring them in some detail. Now, 
To get the most out of the device, you might actually want to do some customization. I like to start by customizing what the pointer looks like. So I come down here to pointer style. This is still in the assistive touch part of the accessibility settings. I like to have the size basically as small as I can. I do like to tweak the color to be blue. It looks quite nice. Auto hide is your preference. I like to have it as, as five seconds. I'll just bring it down to one second for the purposes of the demonstration and just leave my mouse and you'll see that the pointer disappears. I find that quite nice because I do a lot of typing work on the iPad. It's nice to have the pointer just disappear off screen uh, and not distract me. Next, I like to customize the buttons. Um, so if I come back out here, and this time I'm gonna go into devices, under pointer devices, and I'm gonna click on MX Anywhere 2S. So by default, you've got button one, which is the left button mapped to single tap, and you've got button two, which is the right mouse button mapped to open menu, as we've already seen. If I want to customize the rest of the buttons, I can press here on customize additional buttons, and then press the one I'm interested in customizing. So I'm gonna press back and I want to have this be volume down and I'm going to do the same thing again with forward and I'm going to have that be volume up. So now I can use my backwards and forwards buttons to customize the volume as you can see at the top of the screen here. I like to finish this off by having the center button um, be home. I've had it set to that in the past which is why it was, it was the default and it just kind of went straight back. But that's my setup now, so I can I can, I can go straight back to home. I've got my menu, got my tap, I've got my volume up and down. Now the final bit of configuration I like to do is to customize the context menu that comes up when you press the right mouse button. So if I go all the way back to the top of the assistive touch settings and to the top of the screen, you can see here it says customize top level menu. Now, what I'm going to do is add an extra icon to this first screen. I'm going to click on the icon and I'm going to choose App Switcher. Now, if I press on the right mouse button, my menu pops up um, and I can press App Switcher and I get all of the app options here, which is quite cool. There's loads of options if you dig into this menu and really it's only limited by your imagination and what your workflow is like. If you're setting the mouse up on your iPad, I encourage you just to dive in here and see all the crazy things you can do. And obviously over time, just polish it to your workflow. Okay, that's about it for this review. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please hit like, please hit subscribe. I will be posting many more videos, gear reviews, plenty of pro tips for Mac, Windows, and for iPad users. So make sure you don't miss out and hit subscribe. Other than that, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.